Hello everyone, this is Amir Parvez. I hope you all are doing well. My today's video topic is taken from the Oxford Reading Comprehension in Grammar Class 3. In this video, you will learn about some new things and some grammar rules will be revised. So without wasting time, let's just start the lesson. I am taking unit number 2, Reading for Information. The name of this unit is The Voyage of HMS Endeavour. First of all, let's see what is the purpose of reading this story. And the purpose is written on the top of your page. So basically, you will learn about two things. The first one is factual recount and the other is events in order. Factual recount means describing something to someone based on facts. So this is your page. Read this page carefully and then answer the question written on the left side of your page. So first question is, which important person is named early in the recount and this blue line is pointing toward this name and this is James Cook. And the next question is, what key information is given in the opening sentences? Just read this passage carefully and then write what is the information and the information is about transit of Venus. Are the events in order? Just look at the dates and the year. Year and date are same but the months are different. This is April and this is July. Let's see the order of the months are right, correct or not. So April comes first and then July and July comes after April. So yes, the events are in order. Now I'm on my next page, again read this page carefully and then talk about the question written here. So the first question is, what is the recount about? This recount is about a voyage. Where is it taking place? It took place in Plymouth, England. Is it happening now or a long time ago? It happened a long time ago. We are living in 2020 and this voyage took place in 1768 and this is really a very long time. So question number 4 is, what are the most important things you learned from this lesson? So write the answer of this question by yourself. Now you can see here two words are highlighted. This is found and this is called. Written in second form of verb. And we know that in tenses, we use second form of verb in only one tense and that is simple past tense. Let's move to the next page. And that is events in order. Chronological order. Chronological order is when events follow one after the other. A timeline is a way of representing the passing of time. Chronological order is a method of organization in which events are presented as they occurred in time. So here you can see the timeline starting from 1769 and ending in 1771 and here the alphabets. These alphabets are with name of months like August, September, October, November and so on. So what we have to do now, we have to answer these points. So what happened in April 1769? Simply go to the page 12 and read about it and you will find that they reached Matave Bay, Tahiti in April 1769. And what happened in August 1769? So they moved to find Southern Continent and after three months in October they found New Zealand. Here is another timeline of Captain Cook's life and you can see here some questions. So answer these questions by using this timeline. So let's just start solving the questions. When and where was James Cook born? Look at the start of the timeline. James born in Yorkshire in pointing toward this point. Start counting from 1720. 1721, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and 28. So, James born in Yorkshire in 1728. When did Captain Cook die? 
He died in 1779. What was his first job? He worked in a shop in 1743. When did he go to the sea? In 1745. Which was the first ship he commanded? He commanded Endeavour in 1768. What was James' job in attack of Quebec? He was navigator of the ship. When did James get married? He got married in 1762. How did Captain Cook die? He was killed by angry natives in Hawaii. So the answer of these questions are here in the timeline. Question number 3. Make a timeline of what you did yesterday. So complete this question by yourself and complete this according to the time. Let's see the next topic and that is making new words. We can often make new words from a given word for example science and by adding ist it will become scientist or scientific and botany it will become botanist or botanical. Let's solve the question number one. And I hope you will understand the concept clearly. What do these people study? Chemist. A chemist studies chemistry. Artist. An artist studies art. Biologist. A biologist studies biology. Herbalist. A herbalist studies about herbal. We can also make the name of a job by adding er to the end of the verb. This changes the verb into a noun. For example, verb is to report. And by adding er, it will become a noun, reporter. In the same way like to teach. By adding er, it will become teacher. Let's solve the question number 2. Choose any six word from the passage and make new words using er, or, or ist. They have given the one word, sale. And by adding er, it will become sailor. Or by adding ist, it will become sailist. I choose great, board, war, out, beat, and find. You can choose any other word. And now by adding correct suffix with each of my word in correct column, I am making new words. So these words can be regular or can be irregular don't worry about it just make new words let's move to the next page and that is joining sentences joining sentences are same as conjunction which are used to connect two or more sentences for example she called me to play i was busy so this is one sentence and this is another sentence. I am going to join these two sentences by a joining word and making one sentence. She called me to play but I was busy. But is a joining sentence word here. There are a lot of other joining words like and, so, because or but and by using these four joining words i am going to complete by this question so let us start this cook had two sets of order one set was secret and now i am going to add a joining word cook had two sets of order and one set was secret in the same way the endeavor was a small ship it was crowded the endeavor was a small ship so it was crowded the Maoris attacked, the sailors managed to beat them off. The Maoris attacked, but the sailors managed to beat them off. The ship went to Tahiti. The scientists wanted to watch the transit of Venus. The ship went to Tahiti because the scientists wanted to watch the transit of Venus. In question number 3, list all the joining words in the following passage. So I am going to read this passage and I will underline the joining words in this passage. The ship sailed from many days and reached an island. The island had lots of strange plants 
and many dangerous animals. The sailors were afraid, but the captain was very brave. He wanted to stay on the island because he wanted to find the treasure. They did not find the treasure, so they finally gave up. Moving to the next page, and the topic is preposition. A preposition is a word that links a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase to some other part of the sentences. For example, on. On is used to express a surface of something. For example, I put an egg on the kitchen table. At. At is used to indicate place. For example, we saw a baseball game at the stadium. And in. In is used to indicate a location. For example, I am currently staying in a hotel. In grammar, there is no grammar trick to learn about preposition. You can only learn about preposition by doing more and more practice. So let's just start solving the first question. Use at, on, and in in the sentences below. So here is a short story and I am going to solve this by adding preposition in blanks. Tom was going in a taxi one afternoon. He was sitting on the front seat beside the driver. At the back were his friends, Jim and Mary. The taxi slowed down on a traffic signal. Suddenly, a man on a bicycle appeared at the side of the taxi. He tried to snatch Mary's bag, which was in the back seat. Just then, the taxi picked up speed and the cyclist fell on his back with his legs in the air. Question number two. Use all the preposition given below in a paragraph of your own. You can see here eight preposition. So use these eight preposition in your paragraph. For example, once I was sitting under a tree and a fruit fell down from it. When I looked above, I saw an eagle flew over me and so on. I use four preposition in my paragraph, but you create your own paragraph and use these eight preposition in it. And please don't copy my paragraph. So, shortened form of words. Abbreviations. Abbreviations are short forms of lengthy expression or words. For example, we use Jan for January or we use CW for classwork. In daily routine, we use a lot of words in a short form like sometimes we write Monday as month or Tuesday as due. Here are some abbreviations. So, find the full version of these abbreviations by using internet or by using a dictionary. So here BBC stands for British Broadcasting Corporation. USA stands for United States of America. BT stands for British Telecom. And FA stands for Faculty of Arts or Fine Arts. Here are some abbreviations of some words. Now, question number two, what do these abbreviated title means? And this is really very easy. We use or see these abbreviations in our daily routine life. So DR for doctor, CAPT for captain, REF for revolution, PC for personal computer, John Smith Sr. and John Smith Jr. Question number three is, make a list of 10 abbreviations and their full version using the dictionary. If you don't have dictionary, don't worry about it. You can use internet. And by use internet, find out the full version of GMT and UNO. So, thank you so much for watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you think this is good. Thank you so much.